Welcome everybody to another video. So yeah, I'm not gonna fling my arms around too much. You guys can see I have my laptop right here and uh, I wanted to make a video because I feel like this is a pretty prominent topic right now, especially in the camera market is what cameras are making big productions, movies, especially right now. And a lot of these movies went to Sundance and I'm actually looking at a website right now and it's telling me all the cameras that were used to make a bunch of productions this year at the Sundance Movie Festival. The Sundance Film Festival is a festival basically with tens of thousands of film goers and movie goers and up and coming artists who want to get their names known. And the best way to do that is to show your face and your name and your production in front of tens of thousands of people, including big name directors and big name artists. So the Sundance Film Festival is a big thing and it's held in Park City, Utah. And it was a program that was kind of instituted by the Sundance Institute, ironically. So I kind of wanted to make this video because I feel that cameras are going down in price a lot. If you guys are looking at a lot of the cameras nowadays, say you wanted to look at the Blackmagic 4K pocket camera. That thing is like under $5,000 I believe, and it's a super portable, basically cinema grade camera. Now, no, it's not gonna match up to the Ari Alexa or the Red Hydrogen One or whatever. Whatever it's, I think that's a phone actually. So it's that's not the camera, but Red makes really, really expensive cinema grade cameras. So the Blackmagic 4K pocket camera is basically meant to be a cinema camera in your pocket, but it's not gonna be $50,000 quality, but you're still gonna get great quality. And I feel like that's a valid point because a lot of movies nowadays are being produced with smaller rigs, smaller cameras, cheaper cameras. So I figured let's look at some of the top name films that were shown at the Sundance Film Festival recently. Let's get right to it guys. So the first movie was Before You Know It by John Kang. I hope I'm saying that right. It was filmed on the Ari Alexa Mini and it's that's a small rig, a cheap small rig compared to some of the bigger heftier rigs and it's shot in 3.2K ProRes 4444 using the lens of the Cook S4i. The cast was made up primarily of women and Kang is quoted as saying that the S4i has a very pleasant way of compressing people's faces even at wider focal length. I chose the Alexa Mini because of its size and inbuilt ND filters. ND filters are very very helpful for any shooting situation for the most part and they're incredible if they're built in rather than having to pay to get external ND filters. It's so much easier and more convenient to have them built in and luckily the Ari Alexa Mini does come with them built in. Kang then went on to say, I like keeping my camera as compact as possible so that it does not seem imposing to the actors and it allows me to move quicker, which is a valid point. So the second movie is Big Time Adolescence with the director of production being Andrew Hubscher and it seems that he also shot on the Ari Alexa but this time it was the Alexa Mini and the Ari Alexa Amira. So the Amira is a larger camera, I believe, more expensive, but he went with a two camera setup rather than just using one. Andrew is quoted as saying, they wanted a distressed filmic quality that felt authentic and analog. That is why they shot in 2K ProRes 4444 on the Ari Alexa Mini and the Ari Alexa Amira. So, that's kind of odd that they would shoot in 2K rather than 4K. Supposedly though, they opted to shoot in 2K rather than 4K because it gave a more grainy feel, a more distressed, authentic film look. And that's completely understandable. Next up is Britney Runs a Marathon. The director of production was Seamus Tierney. The film was shot in 4K on the Ari Alexa Mini using three different types of lenses. The Panavision Primo, Spherical Primes, Panavision 19 to 90 zoom lens and the Fujinon 85 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. They're quoted as saying, our main character starts with a juvenile worldview. We wanted her world to feel bright and colorful. So we needed a lens that really helped us capture the high contrast nature of that world. As the movie progresses, our main character looks to ground herself in a graceful reality. We chose this collection of lenses so our visual arc could mimic our main character's internal journey. I really like that. Lenses play a big part in movies and any production you're gonna do. If you're gonna choose a larger wide angle lens, you can have a totally different look than if you have a zoom lens that's super cropped. It's totally different in the feel, in the look, in the color, in everything. And I completely agree with that. 
So coming in at number four, we have Clemency with the director of production being Eric Bronco. They used the Ari Alexa Mini and the Alexa SXT, two Alexa cameras, using the Cook Anamorphix lens. They shot in a 2K ProRes 4444 Anamorphic. They're quoted as saying that they used the lens because it felt very cramped. We looked at test after test and ultimately settled on Cook Anamorphix. I really wanted to have more room on this film, both literally and creatively. And I was familiar with them from another project, which also took place in a cramped location. So this mini movie or film was shot in a very cramped location and supposedly the lens was supposed to help with that. So you didn't feel so claustrophobic. I feel like that's a pretty cool way of going about it, choosing the right lens. Up next, we have The Farewell with the director of production being Anna Franqueza Solano. I really hope I said that right, but I completely doubt that I did. So it was shot in the Ari Alexa Mini using the format Ari Raw, and the lens was the Zeiss Master Primes. So they're quoted as saying, we considered the option of shooting on anamorphic to be able to frame a large number of characters, but after doing some tests in Beijing, we ended up going with spherical because we wanted to have the freedom to fill the frame and not have distracting distortions or limited depth of field that would restrict the blocking. Another key factor was the physical limitation of apartments in China, which are often very small. In the end, our decision to use Master Primes and Alexa Mini was as much about fulfilling our visual language as it was making it work practically on set. Hmm, pretty cool, pretty cool. Every lens and every shot and every camera is based on location and need. If you're going to film a movie or film a shot or anything, it has to be based on need. What do you need for that shot? What are you looking for? What does your eye see? What do you want? Everyone has to choose a lens and a camera and a location. But if you already have the location, that's where you choose the lens and the camera. So I've reached a point where I'm actually kind of annoyed. So the reason I'm annoyed is because I haven't seen a single red camera. Many movies are shot on red cameras. They're very high production cameras and good for shooting very big productions and very expensive productions. They have great color reproduction, especially if you're shooting in a raw, flat picture profile. You can do a lot of editing to them. I think they're great cameras. I prefer the Ari Alexa, but the red cameras are great. So let's see if I can't find a red camera shooting somewhere on here for any of these. So I've actually come across something, not the red camera, but a different one. It's for a shooting or film called Loose. The director of production is Larkin Siepel. They used a Panaflex Millennium XL camera. Pretty creative, not gonna lie. Completely different, I've never even heard of the camera. They used a 35 millimeter format and the lenses were the Panavision Primo E- and the G series lenses. Pretty cool. So they're quoted as saying, from the very beginning, shooting on 35 millimeters was the only real option we've considered. I've shot all my features on film and it's simply the look that feels the most truthful and exciting to me. With Loose, the goal was to create an aesthetic that had a bit of heightened gray, edgy reality. Larkin came up with a great description for it. Punchy naturalism. It meant something that still felt grounded, yet was cinematic. In this case, with saturated, contrast-rich images. That's pretty cool. They didn't use the Ari Alexa and they also didn't use a red camera. I find that to be completely different off the board. I'm not sure if it was because they didn't have the money for an Ari Alexa. I'm actually gonna look up the price of this, uh, this camera really quick, tell you guys how much it is. So I just spent 10 minutes looking. I can't find anything on this camera. The first thing that comes up is a Panavision website. It shows no prices anywhere. So it seems that they shot on the Panavision Panaflex XL1, or the XL. However, the Panavision Panaflex website does not show the XL1. They only seem to show the XL2. So that's kind of annoying. I keep looking and I can't find anything on the website. I can't find it on eBay, on Amazon. I can't find this camera anywhere. So I'd have to guess it's very hard to get and it's probably pretty expensive if it's this rare. So if you guys want to read the entire article, there's like 52 of them all together that you can read. 52 movies. Each of them has a little blurb, maybe a paragraph, and it also shows the camera, the lens, the resolution, the format, the director, the director of production, 
and the blurb. So I find this was pretty fun and pretty cool. A totally different twist on what I normally do on my channel. And hopefully soon I'm gonna be changing it up and doing more stuff like this, going online, doing some more research on different things. If you guys wanna hear more or see more, definitely be sure to let me know down below, leave a comment. And uh, you guys can see right here, there's a box. Yeah, I just like covered it. But that box is gonna have something special in it. And I'm gonna be doing a video very, very soon with it. So no, it's not camera equipment. It's not technology at all. You guys are gonna have a hard time guessing this. It's gonna be something fun. It has to do with food. If you guys can take a guess, feel free to take a guess down below. But thank you guys all so much for watching. It's been Mikey. Peace, guys.